Hi there. So in my last video, I took a look at how we could start to import, visualize and classify our point cloud data. And while point clouds are fantastic, both for visualizing 3D data and extracting features, sometimes we just want a good old fashioned raster DSM or DTM. And thankfully within ArcGIS Pro, it's really straightforward to produce surface and terrain models from our point cloud data. So I'm just going to talk you through the, the key steps and a few points that you might want to, to consider. So it's probably one of the slightly less obviously named tools within ArcGIS Pro. It doesn't contain DSM or DTM in the tool name. So if you want to carry this out, the tool that you're looking for is actually the interpolate from point cloud tool within the data management toolbox. So if you pop that open, you'll notice the first thing you need is an input. You can either give it a folder containing last files, uh, but it will work with an individual data set as well. So I'm going to drop this one in for now, and it's going to complain at me. Um, for some reason, it doesn't like it if you drag and drop into it, which I had momentarily forgotten. If we go into add file, we have to change it to files specifically under the supported data types to make it actually show um, the individual last files rather than just the folder. So worth worth bearing in mind. And the one that I've been working with, I think, is, is this one here. So if we select it directly from the folder, it will be happy with us and it will allow us to just select a single individual last file. We then need to set an output raster. Um, I generally go with TIFF format, but whatever raster format you prefer. And we need to give it the cell size for our output um, surface or terrain model. So I'm just going to put one in there for one meter. Um, you'll need to make sure, I think, that you're working in a projected coordinate system so that you can work in straightforward units rather than having to calculate your cell size in decimal degrees. We then have some interpolation methods available to us. Um, tin linear interpolation, tin natural neighbor interpolation, and inverse distance weighted average interpolation. Now, like any interpolation, these are going to have some effect on your output, and you might need to experiment a little bit with which works best for you. Um, if your point cloud data is, is dense enough, then you're not going to require an awful lot of interpolation and obviously there'll be less of a an impact. Um, in my experiments, probably the tin linear interpolation picked up the detail from the, the point cloud the best, um, but I'll show you some examples of the outputs in a minute. The next thing we have is a smoothing method. Uh, so essentially this will, as the name suggests, use a, a filter to smooth out any localized variations in your um, point cloud or in the in the elevation model um, that it's producing I should say um, and again whether or not you need this depends on the, the quality of your your output if you're not sure I'd probably recommend producing one without smoothing first of all checking whether there's any issues and then creating a smoothed version if you think it's necessary um, and as always with smoothing the larger the filter size, the greater the smoothing effect. So the more detail you'll start to, to lose, but the, the smoother the output um, surface or terrain model will be. And then we can say what type of model we're producing. So if we go with a terrain model, then essentially the, the interpolation method will only use the points that have been classified as ground. And if you haven't already gone through the steps of classifying your point cloud, then we can actually enter options here that it will use during the, the classification process to identify those, those ground points. Personally, I'd probably always recommend classifying the point cloud first. Um, it's, it's generally you know, a, a useful thing to do. And again, I, I covered that in the last video. 
but if you do want to, to classify ground points um, then you can kind of enter some of the options here and the, the kind of values available to you uh, are shown in the the information window here so if, if you do need to do that those options are available to you um, as I said if you've already classified the ground points then we don't need to worry about adding extra classified ground options down here if you're going with a surface model then it's not just using the ground points it's going to to use the kind of first return or all of the points um, across the, the surface and the input fill DEM only really applies if you know you've got no data gaps within your um, your point cloud layer in which case you can use an existing elevation model to to try to fill in those those gaps um, now again if your point clouds dense enough then you don't need to, to really worry about this um, if you're producing a, a terrain model so only using the ground points you may well end up with no data areas um, because as in the example you can see here a big chunk of this is rooftops um, and therefore the the kind of area underneath this you can see if we look there's no no ground points beneath those those buildings so we will need to interpolate across those if we don't give it a fill dm it will just attempt a, a kind of standard interpolation across those gaps anyway so to be honest a lot of the time obviously if we're producing a terrain or surface model the chances are we don't already have a good quality one for that area but it may be you have got a coarser data set perhaps um, that you can use to to fill in those gaps so the main things we need are just the input the output interpolation method whether we want any smoothing um, and whether we want to produce a surface or a terrain model and once we get to that point you can hit run now because point clouds do tend to be pretty big data sets it does take a few minutes to to run this um, so to save us all sitting around waiting while that happens I've actually run a, a series of outputs already that I'll I'll demonstrate to you but these were kind of exactly the the inputs that I used to produce these these results so if I open up here um, the first one that I produced was using this tin linear interpolation with no smoothing and we can see the output here and again you know at first glance there's no obvious major issues with this um, when it first adds in it will just do it as a standard color ramp so I have gone into the symbology and switched my symbology from a, a standard stretch to shaded relief just to improve the, the visualization of some of the, the more local features. Uh, so just for, for comparison of the different interpolation methods available, so this is the tin linear interpolation. The tin natural neighbor interpolation produced this result. give it a second it will change and you possibly saw a very small flicker there the differences are minor because um, the point cloud itself is fairly dense you can see around some of the the kind of tops of the vegetation there are slight differences but you know the the overall shape of the surface model is very similar and then the third IDW um, average interpolation produced this result which will again appear in just a second and again there's some minor differences particularly around the the vegetation where we have um, I guess a, a rougher surface kind of more rapid changes in in elevation but the the main features the buildings the the topography you know have been captured just as well so it's it's difficult to say which of these is the best um, as i said when i spent a bit of time exploring the first option to me probably captured the shape of the the vegetation best compared to the original um, point cloud data set 
but it's 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 kind of you know I have I have faith a little bit as to which of them was the the best. Just to demonstrate the impact of smoothing, um, I did run the tin um, linear interpolation again with a Gaussian five by five smoothing. Um, so essentially, this produces the the surface model and then applies a a smoothing filter to the output, which will get rid of smaller localized variations. And again, if I just turn this on for comparison, give it a second to load, the effect is, is pretty immediately obvious. So now a lot of those uh, more rapid variations, um, changes in elevation along the top of the vegetation have been smoothed out. Um, and you know, you can see the the building itself essentially everything looks looks slightly blurred which is basically what a what a smoothing filter does and finally i did go ahead and produce uh, a digital terrain model um so for this one i again used the the tin linear interpolation no smoothing and as i'd already classified the the ground points um, I didn't use a fill DM, so it just naturally uh, is, is kind of doing its best to interpolate across the gaps. And I didn't add any additional options for, for classify ground. Um, so it will just use my, my existing ground points. And if I turn that on to show the result, there we go. Um, now, I think I did leave I did put some some smoothing on this. Um, it might even have gone as much as as seven by seven, and it's probably the smoothing is probably more applicable really to the terrain model because we won't generally expect the kind of bare earth terrain to vary as rapidly as we would the surface model where we have things like elevation that can change height quite drastically over a, a small area. So in a lot of ways, the, the smoothing option is probably more appropriate when we we have our terrain model. Um, and it will also help smooth out potentially some of the jumps where it is interpolating across gaps where no ground points were present, be that below elevation, below buildings, um, or anything else that might be obscuring the, the ground surface below. And, you know, it does a, a pretty good job whenever I've downloaded external terrain models. I can't say that they've done a significantly better job of um, interpolating across the gaps and accounting for, for areas where where buildings were present. You know, we'll always get some artifacts if we've had to remove surface features when creating our, our terrain model. So that's fairly inevitable. And there you have it. That's really all of the, the kind of essentials you need to know if you want to go about converting your point cloud data into a surface or terrain model. Probably the only other one thing to note, as I mentioned, it is quite time consuming. The point cloud data itself can be um, quite large. If you do have a very dense point cloud and actually you want to produce a much lower resolution um, surface or terrain model, and particularly if you're going to be running multiple variations, um, one thing you can do if you want to is actually use the thin LAS tool to reduce the size of your initial point cloud. You know, if you've got a, a drone derived point cloud, for example, that's kind of centimeter resolution, and actually you only want to produce a one meter surface model or terrain model to feed into something else, then you know it may well make sense to to thin that data out beforehand. So in this case, we can just again put our input, a target output folder, um, the data set name that we want to produce. We can choose to thin just in two dimensions or in three dimensions. Um, and our target output resolution. Um, and there are quite a range of point selection methods, which are probably going to have one of the biggest impacts on this. Again, you know, you can determine for yourself which of these 
seems most relevant for what you want to do you know closest to average height if we just are trying to get the average for a terrain model across the the area you know if you want to pick the the first returns then maybe highest point will be most appropriate or just closest to center for each of the um, the regions it breaks your grid down into uh, you can choose to preserve specific classes so say we wanted to keep a more detailed model of the buildings or vegetation uh, or even keep the ground more detailed and thin out everything else um, then we can choose to to do that um, and to, to also exclude points from the um, the output last file so you know for example we could say we don't want buildings so we exclude those those classes altogether and the points that have been classified as buildings won't be included in the output um, last file uh, but also the the process of thinning the file is quite time consuming itself if you've got a big file so if if you've got a dense point cloud and you just want to produce a single surface or terrain model then actually the time saving of running this first is is probably fairly minimal because you may well end up sitting for as long waiting for that to thin um, as you would to just produce the the terrain or surface model in the first place so potentially useful to to be aware of if if the situation is that you've got a very dense point cloud and you are hoping to thin some of those points out so that you can carry out multiple operations more quickly Okay, so I hope that was useful. As always, um, keep an eye out for more videos coming soon. And if you did find it helpful, please do like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.